We just calm down from one solar storm when we get hit by another, and a third is on the way. What does this mean for you? Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. We're calming down from a big solar storm that bumped us up to G2 levels and brought aurora down to mid-latitudes. And it was all due to that big coronal hole you can see rotating off of the sun's west limb. That brought us some decent fast solar wind over the past few days. And even though we're just beginning to calm down, you can look at the disk and I bet you didn't notice, but a stealthy solar storm launched from about center disk back on the 25th and it's traveled towards Earth. And if I show you the stereo view, you can see in the coronagraphs, whoosh, there it goes off like that, and that direction is headed towards Earth. As a matter of fact, it is hitting Earth now, and it's actually quite large, but it's slow and it's not oriented properly, so we're not going to see aurora down to mid-latitudes, but it is extending the aurora show for high latitudes. So you aurora photographers at high latitudes, you're getting even more aurora than you expected. But wait, the show's not over because we have a coronal hole here in the southern region that's gonna be rotating into the Earth strike zone in the next couple days. And it could bump us back up to active conditions with the solar wind it's gonna be sending us. So you aurora photographers, you're just loving life right now. You're getting lots of chances for some decent aurora. And on top of that, we we do have a few bright regions that are also rotating into Earth view. So this is an active week in space weather, and it looks like pretty much everybody has something to smile about. Switching to our M flare threat meter, you can see the X-ray flux continues to be extremely low, and therefore by proxy the solar flux continues to be low. We do still have poor radio propagation on Earth's day side. As you can notice, we no longer have the data dropouts. That's because we're out of eclipse season, and the moon is no longer uh, blocking the, the data coming from the GOES spacecraft, so we won't see those data fallouts anymore. However, you do still have low solar flux. But as you notice, right around the 25th and 26th, you start seeing that that flux rise a little bit, just a tiny bit. That's from the bright regions that are rotating into Earth view now. And they have boosted the solar flux just a hair, and hopefully they'll boost it a little bit more. But it's not quite enough to get us into the marginal range for radio propagation, but we are going to continue to keep our fingers crossed. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see things were pretty quiet until on the 24th. Whammo! We got hit by that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that rotated into the Earth strike zone. It bumped us up to storm levels and then G2 storm levels. And then we kind of bounced around a little bit for a day or two before things began to settle down right around the 28th. And it got a little bit more quiet. And then we got hit by that stealthy solar storm. And you can see we started ramping back up. Now, unfortunately, because because this stealthy solar storm isn't oriented properly, we're only bumping up to about unsettled conditions. And this is what's bringing more aurora to high latitudes, but we're probably not going to see it at mid latitudes. So, you know, your aurora photographers, well, either drive north or drive way down south or, you know, just kind of hang out because we do have another chance for another solar storm when that uh, southern polar coronal hole rotates into the Earth strike zone here in the next couple days. It could bump us up to active conditions. So these unsettled conditions may change here in the next couple days. And now for your Leo Mio Geo orbit outlook. As we switch to our low energy particle environment, these are the particles that cause surface charging on the outside of spacecraft, including charging up the solar arrays that then can give discharges and electrical short circuits. You can see those fluxes building up in around the geo orbit and even down into the Mio orbit. So this is a lot of surface charging, folks. This is all due to that big solar storm that hit. Now you can see those fluxes have actually got flushed right around the 28th, but then they began to build up again. So satellite operators, in, in geo and also clear down to Mio orbits, expect that you're going to be dealing with some surface charging issues easily over the next couple days. Now, as we switch to our higher energy particle environment, these are the particles that can penetrate further into the spacecraft electronics and actually cause upsets with performance. You can actually see inside of geo again, we are having some issues with uh, the internal charging fluxes. Now, they do get flushed on the 28th, just like the lower energy particle stuff does, but we are seeing injections once again. So the the internal charging uh, capacity is beginning to build up again around the geo and down even 
and into the MEO orbits. So you satellite operators at GEO and MEO, you're going to be dealing with both surface charging and internal charging. And then of course down at LEO, well because of that solar storm, you're going to be dealing with drag issues. So that means your uh, satellites are going to be slowing down and changing orbits. So what else does the Sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the Sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the Sun pretty much from the side. And when you look at the disk in Stereo's view, you do immediately see that big bright region in the middle of Stereo's disk. That's the one that's beginning to rotate into Earth view now and is boosting the solar flux just a little bit. Now on top of that, you can see on the east limb, if you look out in the kind of tenuous atmosphere, you see something like a slow solar storm or a streamer blowout kind of just slowly lifting off the sun, along with a couple other things that look like they might be failed eruptions. So we might be seeing a little bit more solar storm launches than we're used to seeing. Maybe the sun's thinking of waking up. I don't know. Now on top of that, we also have a couple high latitude bright regions. They're not big enough to be considered sunspots, but they may also help boost that solar flux for amateur radio operators and emergency responders as they continue to rotate into Earth view and hopefully help the radio propagation. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of the new moon on our way to the first quarter, and by the fourth, the moon will be about 50% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to see those dim objects in the sky, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are in the middle of being hit by that stealthy solar storm that was launched back on the 25th, and it will be affecting us over the next couple days. In fact, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with up to about a 25% chance of a minor storm. Now, mid-latitudes, the effects really aren't as strong because the storm really isn't magnetically oriented the right way to cause a ruckus down here. So we're only expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 15% chance of active conditions. But your aurora photographers don't expect any big shows. They'd be fleeting at best, if any. And then things will settle down over the next couple days, and then we get hit by that fast wind from that southern uh, polar coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone, and that could bump us back up to active conditions at high latitudes, and maybe a, maybe a possibility of active conditions at mid-latitudes starting around the beginning of the week. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have a spotless sun right now, and so we have no risk for radio blackouts, and that should make you GPS users very happy. GPS reception on Earth's day side should be pretty good. Now, we do have a couple bright regions on the Earth-facing disk right now, with a couple more that might be rotating into Earth view here over the next couple days. And we're going to be optimistic and say that we're skimming the hairy edge of uh, marginal radio propagation by having that solar flux be about 70, 69 to 70. And hopefully this trend will continue over the next few days. If these regions stay strong and don't fizzle out, we could possibly see marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side easily over the next week, maybe even a little bit longer. So keep your fingers crossed. Now also because we are at solar minimum, we uh, do have a bigger uh, cosmic ray flux impingement than we normally would have. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew, who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose. And this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So for a solar minimum sun, the space weather sure has been active this week. We just came down from a big solar storm that bumped us to G2 levels, and we don't even calm down from that when we get hit by a stealthy solar storm, and that's still ongoing. The nice thing is that it's extending aurora show, especially for you high-latitude aurora photographers, so enjoy that over the next couple days. Now, we should quiet down in through the weekend just a little bit, and then we get hit by some fast wind from yet another coronal Hole. So your aurora photographers, boy, you're getting a lot of chances to catch some decent shows. And enjoy that, because when things quiet down, uh, we may have a couple weeks before we see any real activity again. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, we may be hugging that bottom line of marginal radio propagation thanks to a couple bright regions that have rotated into Earth view. It's not sure how long these uh, active regions will continue to, to stay bright before they begin to fizzle, but hopefully it'll 
will give us some decent boost to radio propagation over the next couple days and possibly in through the rest of the week before things settle down. Now, GPS users, well, your GPS reception probably hasn't been all that great as of late with the solar storms hitting, but now the solar storms are calming down a little bit with the not really as strong as they usually are, so you're probably getting pretty decent GPS reception, and as long as you stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from Aurora, your GPS reception will continue to stay true. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.